What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily grow lettuce in your backyard so you can be harvesting fresh salads all summer long. Let's go! <laughs> Lettuce is one of those veggies that I think we're all familiar with and love. This is what we're aiming for right here. Fresh, organically grown lettuce that we can just go outside, cut, bring in, and make a delicious salad. Let's get right into the planting though, so we can get to harvesting. When it comes to planting your lettuce, you can either directly sow it into the ground, or you can start in trays. I highly prefer starting in trays for a number of reasons. The first reason that I like starting in trays is you can start your seeds earlier and then transplant out your plants when they're larger. This way you can get an earlier harvest. The second reason that I love starting in trays is when you do and then transplant out, you could get perfect spacing. As you can see here, we've got really nice spacing on this lettuce. And when you have good spacing, there's no wasted space. So you can get a larger overall harvest. The third reason that I love starting my seeds in trays is for new gardeners especially, getting good germination with your lettuce seeds can be a bit tricky. Now, let's actually get into the act of planting our lettuce seeds. What I like to do is get a tray like this and a decent seed cell. Then we wanna get some potting mix or seed starting mix. And we don't want a lot of sticks or anything in there because lettuce seeds, they won't really push through heavy soil. They're kind of weak seeds, especially when they're germinating. So let's fill this little cell up with some damp soil. We want our soil to be a bit damp, but we don't want it really, really soggy. We're gonna just push it down a little bit, make sure it's basically all filled. Just like that. Next, what we wanna do is just make, I'm just gonna make a tiny indication right where I'm gonna put my lettuce just with my finger, really small one. And we wanna remove some of these big sticks if they're in there. Next, we'll take our lettuce seeds. And we're gonna do the solar flare here. And like I mentioned, lettuce seeds, they won't push up through any mulch or anything because they're weak seeds. So we don't wanna bury these deeply at all. We barely wanna bury them when we plant them. We just wanna lightly dust over them. So we're gonna take about two seeds per location, just drop them in. It's okay if we do three in one spot. Next, we're gonna take either our soil, if it's a good soil, or what I like to do sometimes is I'll take a quarter inch hardware cloth and sift the soil. When I sift the soil, it takes out all the big sticks and stuff so that we're left with this which is a nice, really light soil that we can just dust over the top of our seeds very lightly. If we want, we could also add something like vermiculite. Adding vermiculite to this will make it an even lighter and better aeration, making it really easy for the seeds to pop through. But if you don't have vermiculite, you don't need to use it. We'll just do it with some of the sifted soil right here. So let's take this sifted soil and let me show you how lightly you wanna dust this over. Very, very lightly, barely even covering them because lettuce is one of those things which is uh, seeds which is a little different than others where Bill Mollison talks about it. The lettuces actually need a little flash of light. They need a little bit of light in order to germinate. So if we cover them up completely, that won't happen. They also won't push through our mulches because they're just such a weak seed. So we're just gonna very lightly dust, dust over our lettuces, barely covering them. Now, we're just gonna water our lettuce seeds in then we're gonna take this tray, I'm gonna cover it with this plastic covering, and leave this in a, bring this to a location that's gonna get some good light, and just leave it there. You could put it in a spot like a greenhouse like I do, or even on like a south facing window, but if you do put it on a south facing window, just know that you might need some supplemental lighting so that your ceilings don't get too tall and too leggy. Lettuce seeds take about one to two weeks to germinate. And they'll start germinating when the temperatures are as low as like 35 degrees. So it's not necessary to put a heating mat or anything underneath these trays. When your lettuce seeds come up, just like this, what I like to do is go through and make sure I thin my lettuces down to only one plant per cell, just like that. And then at this point, you could leave your lettuces in the trays like this and then move ahead in time, like we do right here, about a week or so. And this is the size that they will be. When they're this size, you could 
basically transplant them into the garden if the weather is ready. But in the spring, like I said, I like to start my lettuces really early. So what I'll do is I'll transplant my lettuces into a larger pot. This way they can get a little bigger. So when it is time to actually transplant into the garden, they're large and it's not too early in the year. I mainly just do this for my spring lettuce, my early spring lettuce. Like I mentioned, you could just leave these into trees and then transplant them out just as they are. One thing you want to take into account though is the lettuce roots do not like being in uh, sitting water for a long time because the roots are prone to rotting. So when you water your tray, make sure it's not oversaturated and after the, uh, after the soil has time to suck up some of that moisture, just make sure if there's any extra water in the tray, you just dump it out. Again, you do not want your plants in sitting water. Lettuces are ready to transplant into the garden when they have about four true leaves. And you could transplant your lettuces about two to three weeks before your last expected frost date because the lettuces, they can withstand that kind of frost. And before you transplant your lettuces into the ground, if you're gonna start them in a greenhouse or inside, I advise that you harden off your plants. So hardening off is where you get your plants acclimated to the outside temperatures before you actually put them into the ground. This is important because we want to make sure that when we're planting these plants that they're used to those outdoor climatic conditions because they're not going to be used to the soil. They're going to have to transition into new soil. So we don't want to make it hard for them. If they have to transition into new soil and they're not used to the outside temperatures and the outside climate, it's going to cause some stress. It could put some shock on the plants and even possibly kill them. So we need to make sure that we're really hardening our plants off before we plant them. Another thing we need to take into account is proper spacing. So when it comes to planting your lettuce, you can either plant, I either plant about two or four lettuces per square foot. So in the spring, a lot of time I'll plant two, even the loose leaf lettuce, because they grow so fast and so vigorously. But most loose leaf varieties, you could plant four per square foot. When it comes to the fall and the winter though, I do things a little different. I plant my lettuces even denser because at that time of the year, they grow much slower because there's uh, less sun and it's a lot cooler out. So depending on the time of the year, I space my let lettuces just a little bit different. When transplanting my lettuce, I also like to inoculate it with the mycorrhizal fungi. This helps with transplant shock and also all stages of growth. When it comes to the soil, lettuce likes growing in a light, humus-rich soil that has a good amount of nitrogen in it. So when we transplant our lettuces, it's a good idea to either add a little fertilizer or we can top dress with a decent soil. That's what I like to do. If you guys want to grab some spring merch, there's only about four days left. So check out jamesperjury.com if you want to grab a shirt or something. Let's get back to the planting though. So lettuce loves growing in cool conditions. That's why I mentioned that I love starting it earlier and getting it into the ground early. This way we can get our harvest before the summer heat comes. If you did start early though and got your stuff out, it's a good idea to make sure you have a row cover ready. Just in case you get a late frost or something, you can protect your lettuce and it will be just less stress on the lettuce when that cold weather comes. We got Tuck over here on full duty after you check out that lettuce. He's watching this corner because the squirrels keep coming back and this guy's gotta stay on top of them like he always does. He's one of our guest, best garden protectors. You can see how dirty his nose is. He's been having a lot of fun out here, maybe even almost as much as us. Another thing to take into account when growing lettuces is this idea of microclimates. So in the spring, the fall, in the winter, we can plant our lettuces in locations that get full sun. But in the summer, that full sun will cause those lettuces to go to seed or to bolt. So what I like to do is plant my lettuce in locations in the summer that I make sure gets the most shade. So find little microclimates in your location and you might wanna plant your lettuces in those shadier spots during the hot days of the summer. Another thing that I like to do to ensure that I'm getting lettuce through the summer is I'll plant lettuces in pots just like this. This way, when the summer heat comes, I can just take a pot like this and move it into a shady location so it's not in full sun. Plus, planting in pots makes it so it's like we're creating more space, which ultimately increases our overall harvest. One other thing you can do, which is something I like doing too, is when that summer heat comes, you could just use a 40% shade cloth over your bed too, and that will prevent some of your lettuces from bolting and going to seed. Lettuces are 90% water and have shallow roots. So we need the soil to remain moist for these lettuces to grow well and not get bitter. So what I like to do 
is in the spring, I really don't actually worry too much about putting a mulch down, but once the summer heat comes, we wanna make sure we have a mulch down around these plants just so they remain moist. If this dries out, they're gonna get, like I mentioned, too bitter and we don't want our lettuces to be bitter. Another thing I do is when my lettuces have been in the ground for a couple weeks, I'll go around and I'll fertilize them. The way I like to fertilize them is I'll just take a potting mix like this that I have, my good Happy Frog potting mix, and I like to mix in a good organic fertilizer. This is one I love a lot, IB Organics. And if you guys want, you can use the promo code TUCK10 for this. So this stuff works really great. It's organic too. So what I'll do is I'll just take some of the fertilizer and I'll mix it into my soil. Then I'll just mix this all around. And then I'll use this and I'll top dress around the base of my plants with this. As you can see, I've already done it with this one. So at this point, I don't think I need to do it. The lettuce will look beautiful here. So that's how I like to make sure that my plants get enough nitrogen, just so they have that consistent, good growth. Young lettuce plants do not like competing with weeds. So we wanna make sure we have our lettuces planted, that we're removing any weeds when they first come up, just so it makes it easier on those lettuces to grow. So some of our varieties like the loose leaf lettuces will be ready in about 45 to 60 days, even though we could harvest them whenever. And then some of our um, romaine lettuces take about 75 to 85 days, and then the crisp heads can take about 75 to 100 days. Let me bring you over to a loose leaf lettuce here. This one's called Lunix. I think that's how you pronounce it, L-U-N-I-X. And this is where variety selection becomes important. So a variety like this, the Lunix, is actually really tolerant of the heat and is bolt resistant. So what that means is when the summer months come, it's not gonna be as prone to actually going to seed and bolting really early. Another variety that I grow that's really heat tolerant is the solar flare. That one works great too, and the slow bolt. So over here we have a variety. Here's a little butterhead lettuce. This is the bronze mignonette. This one only takes about like 46 days to harvest or so. So we're gonna grab one of these. You'll notice that these things aren't bolting. So bolting is, is what it's called when the lettuces go to seed. What happens is they'll shoot up, they'll start to get tall and then they'll shoot up a main stem. When this happens, the lettuce becomes really bitter. So you wanna make sure you're harvesting your lettuce before that actually happens. So we're gonna grab one of these bronze mignonettes. This is one of my favorite varieties. Just have a snack. It grows quick and it grows absolutely vigorously. We can just take this little head like this, bring it inside and eat it up. So good. Another thing we want to think about when growing lettuce is we wanna make sure we're staggering our plantings. So we just harvested this bronze mignonette right here. And now we're gonna get this bronze mignonette, which is a couple weeks behind. So what I like to do is stagger my plantings. This way I can extend my harvest. Another simple way to do this is to grow a couple different varieties because one quick variety might be ready in 45 days and then another variety is ready in 75 days. So you can plant lettuces at the same time, but then still extend your season with different variety selection. When it comes to lettuces, they're mostly pest and disease free, but there's a couple pests you might have issues with. The first one is slugs and the second one are cutworms. So if you have an issue with slugs, you can use a great pop product that's called Sluggo. It's organic and works really well. And if you have a problem with the cutworms, you can use the BT, because the BT will kill all those caterpillars. If you wanna kill both at once, you can also go with a product called Sluggo Plus, but that's basically just a spinosad, and that's um, a lot less selective with the kind of insects that it actually goes after and kills. When it comes to growing lettuce in the fall, you wanna time it so those lettuces are fully mature about the time of the first expected frost date. The reason for this is because the lettuces are actually less cold hardy when they're older than when they're younger. The seedlings are actually more cold hardy. But if you're like me, you use season extension tools like the hinged hoop house that I like to grow in. With this hinged hoop house, I can make it so that I can grow lettuce all year long. With good variety selection, ones that are cold hardy, and with that hinged hoop house, I can be eating lettuces, like I said, throughout the winter. Like I mentioned earlier, in the fall and winter months though, I make sure that I plant my lettuces much denser than I usually do because once the fall comes and like winter, we're talking later in the season, the plants just grow a lot slower when it's cooler out and they have less light. Another thing I want to mention is, if you wanna easily grow lettuce all year round, even outside, you can do something like this. Right here is the Claytonia. 
This is also known as miner's lettuce. So maybe it's not a true lettuce, but us permaculturists love this plant so much because it's incredibly cold hardy. It seeds on its own and it's absolutely delicious. So even if you wanna just have some fresh greens growing throughout the garden and you don't think maybe you can build a hinge tube house, get some Claytonian. It's a lettuce that will let you grow all year long. Before I let you go, I wanna go around and show you some of the lettuces I'm growing this year. Here's the first one, Forel and Schluss. I think that's how you pronounce it. Here's another. I think Merville des Quatre. I'm not good at pronouncing them, but at least we're decent at growing them. Right, Tuck? Here's another Concept Botvian. I don't have the label for this one, but man, look at the color on this thing. Nice crisp leaves, too. Lalo Rosa. Look how beautiful this one is. Nice color. These ones look like they're gonna be delicious as well. Here's another one, and I can't pronounce this one, but I'll go with the common name, Devil's Ear. Pretty nice color on this one too. Here's another one, and this one has good heat tolerance as well. The Bronze Beauty. The Pirat Butterhead. This one looks a lot like the Bronze vignette to me. And this one right here is the variety of the seed that I planted at the beginning. This is the solar flare. A loose leaf lettuce, but it just gets so big that I probably should have just planted one per square foot. They say this thing needs like 14 inches. A good loose leaf that you could just pop the leaves off whenever you want. This one here is called Pondero Romaine. Like I mentioned, the romaines take a little longer than something like your loose leaves or some of your butter heads. So this one will be ready a little later into the season for us. These ones right here with the beautiful speckling and everything, this is the Mayan Jaguar. That's today's video, girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Lettuce are one of those plants that once you get a handle on growing them, it's just such a joy to grow because you can grow them all year round. And I mean, salads, it's just, it's one of my favorite things to eat, so I just love growing them so much. Before I let you go though, I want to let you know to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. If you want to grab some of the spring merch, again, it, we only have like four days left to grab it, so make sure you do at jamesprigioni.com. I also wanted to thank one of our new channel members, Robert Stenger. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for directly contributing to the channel and helping to make all this possible. So me and Tuck had a lot of fun out here. He's I don't know, chasing some squirrel somewhere, like usual. He likes to stay busy and stay at work. And we're gonna get back to work too. So James and Tuck will be back to you again real soon. We 